The InterArc B580 graphics card was released on December 13th, 2024. This graphics card is designed for gamers and creators who seek high performance without breaking the bank. With its advanced architecture and more efficient power consumption versus the Alchemist series, the B580 delivers decent performance in both gaming and creator tasks. In short, the ARC B580 offers a compelling balance of performance and affordability in most scenarios. But, not all scenarios. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, so to speak. So let's dive into this GPU from Intel. Firstly, I managed to get my hands on the ASRock ARC B580 Steel Legend 12GB OC Edition. As you can see it's a rather large GPU, it takes up roughly 2.5 slots, requires two 8-pin PCI Express power connectors, boasts three ARGB fans and also has an ARGB Steel Legend logo. The card is 29.8 centimeters in length, 13.1 centimeters wide and 5.1 centimeters in height. It has a metal backplate. And also note, both the ARGB fans and the Steel Legend logo can be changed within the ASRock Polychrome Sync desktop application. This is the OC version of the ARC B580, but there isn't much of an overclock to be honest on the GPU clock. ASRock advertised it with a clock of 2800 MHz or 2.8 GHz, uh, but while gaming I've seen it go all the way up to 2850 MHz and it actually stays at that clock. So the clock for the limited edition Intel SKU is set to be 2670 MHz, so ASRock have added an extra 180 MHz. Let's now have a look at the rest of the specs of the GPU. So firstly, it is a PCI Express 4.0 device but only uses 8 lanes, not 16. It has 12 gigs of GDDR6, a GPU clock of 2.8 gigahertz as stated previously, supports ray tracing, has a memory clock of 19 gigabits per second, a memory interface or bandwidth of 192 bits, supports a maximum resolution of 7680 by 4320. The interface, the interfaces should I say the card supports is DisplayPort 2.1 along with HDMI 2.1a. There as you can see there are three display ports and one HDMI port. It is also recommended you have a power supply of a minimum of 650 watts. It also requires two 8-pin PCI Express power connectors and weighs almost a kg coming in at 959 grams. So for price, these cards were advertised to start from 249 US dollars, specifically for the Intel limited edition SKU. For this specific ASRock card, it was initially advertised for 270 US dollars, which is an amazing price for a 12 gig card, especially one aimed at 1440p gaming. I unfortunately bought mine for 370 US dollars after import duties and all of that. So I mentioned with these GPUs, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. So where has the sun gone and where has the rainbows gone? Well, if you haven't seen Hardware Unboxed or Hardware Canucks videos, they recently released videos talking about how these B580s seem to have issues with older CPUs with certain games due to what they are calling driver overhead. Okay, basically in other words, the drivers result in heavy CPU usage, the GPU drivers for the B580, which result in lower FPS. Okay, so we also got to remember there was also a bit of driver overhead on the Intel Alchemist cards as well, so this isn't new to Intel. It also does not happen across all games, only a few, which I feel could possibly be fixed with driver updates and optimizations on Intel side. I might be wrong, I know Hardware Unbox seem to feel that it is more due to how the GPUs work, due to their architecture. I feel that if it's not happening across all games and only specific games, then it could be a driver issue. You also got to keep in mind these older CPUs where these GPUs have been tested are most likely um, having these GPUs run in PCI Express 3.0 slots where this is actually a PCI Express 4 device and only by 8 lanes. So now you're dropping it into a PCI Express 3 slot 
and running it there at only 8 lanes, so hindering its bandwidth even further. So when shit hits the fan, it really hits the fan. Well, that's what I've seen according to the results I saw in hardware unboxed videos. Thanks, Steve. With that all said, let's have a look at the build that this GPU has been placed in on my side and run through some benchmarks. So I placed this in the all Intel build. There are other videos that you can go watch on that Intel build. Anyway, just to rerun through the specs, it's got for the CPU, it's a running a Core i5 12400F. For the RAM, there's 32 gigs of DDR5 running at 5600 megahertz. For the motherboard, it's a MS Pro, MSR Pro B760M-P. Uh, for the PSU, I've got an 800 watt RAID Max 80 plus gold uh, PSU. For the monitor, it's a 27 inch 1440p 165 hertz LED curved dull gaming monitor, specifically the S2722DGM. Alright, with that all out the way, let's now jump to the benchmarks. There are a couple of graphs that I'm going to be running through now. Let's get into it. So for Black Myth Wukong, you might have noticed that I basically ran the same benchmarks twice, as super resolution was set to 75% for 1440p, which renders at 1080p. Then at 1080p, I set super resolution to 100%, which is native. I just wanted to test the, effect of, uh, the effectiveness of XCSS. And yeah, as you can see, the, the results are literally the same. So with the B580, you can easily play this game uh, without any issues. A uh, note, we did not uh, have any ray tracing enabled, and we've always got resizable bar enabled for Arc GPUs. What I did find odd was the VRAM usage between the two resolutions. I was expecting them to be the same, or at least 100 megs of each other. So if we have a look at the VRAM usage graph, for some reason 1080p used 200 megs more VRAM, but for each preset, when compared to 1440p. So if we take a look at the 1080p Dying Light 2 benchmarks, there's not much of a difference here, strangely enough, between the a750 and the b580 so i was quite surprised by this i'm um, thinking that the b580 would be quite far ahead um, for some reason the, it's not I, I don't understand why i benchmarked this thing over and over again thinking there was a problem um, restarted dying light for each preset and so on and as i said it was pretty much the same result every time let's now look at 1440p so at 1440p, you can see the B580 pulls ahead of the A750 in all presets, uh, more so in the medium and high preset, so much that in the high preset, it's not that far behind the RX 6800. Um, and yeah, as I say, these B580s really show their value at 1440p. Also note with uh, Dying Light 2, they implement scaling um, based on your resolution and preset so hence why there's not a huge difference between 1080p and 1440p looking at stalker 2 uh, as you can see at 1080p with xss quality the b580 pulls ahead in all presets by not not by much though and um, what i did notice though is the B580's usage, GPU usage, never went above 80%. It was hovering between 65 and 80%, and CPU usage never went above 70% at 1080p. Now you'll see the same thing happening at 1440p, and the results are almost identical. I have a feeling this is a driver issue. So let's look at 1440p. So by looking at the 1440p results, you can definitely see there is an, either a driver issue or a game optimization issue. Because other than the GPU usage increasing between 80 and 90%, the frame rates are basically identical for the B580. CPU usage again was the same. I actually ran this benchmark over and over again, and I ended up getting the same results every time. So definitely an issue here with either the drivers or the game itself, or both. Um, but you can definitely see there's there's some type of issue here. 
Call of Duty, I ran two types of benchmarks. A custom benchmark, where I benchmarked some multiplayer matches where I actually played the game online. And then I also used the built-in benchmark. I have to say, I didn't see anything strange here. The B580 actually behaved like any other GPU should. At 1080p, it got more FPS than it did at 1440p. The GPU usage was pegged at pretty much 100% majority of the time, and the gameplay was really smooth. And then finally, I'm just showing you the difference in the average frame rate I got in my custom benchmarks versus the built-in benchmark in Call of Duty for both 1080p and 1440p for the B580. Alrighty, so what are my thoughts on the B580? To be honest, I think it's a great GPU, great value for money, especially if you plan on using it for like 1440p gaming. Hell, even for like creator tasks, it's it's fast. I mean, I rendered this video with um, Intel's QuickSync and it is fast. I will say though, if you do plan on purchasing this GPU, make sure your CPU and motherboard support resizable bar and that it is also enabled. If you do plan to purchase this GPU, another thing to consider is that you do run this in a PCI Express 4 or 5 slot. And I also wouldn't try run this GPU with anything less than an Intel 11, 11th gen or Horizon 3000 series. And if you're using it for gaming, try aim for no less than 6 cores. You know, and the reason I say this is I'm basically trying to eliminate the possible driver overhead issue for this GPU. I'm still hoping it's a, just a driver problem which Intel can solve, but if it is due to the GPU's architecture, the GPU was designed for PCI Express 4. Hence why I suggest that you run this GPU with no less than an 11th gen Intel processor or Ryzen 3000 series CPU as they both support PCI Express 4. Anything below those generations on PCI Express 3 or lower. I mean, I personally haven't had any issues running like a PCI Express 4 GPU and a PCI Express 3 slot. I ran my 3060 Ti with a 5700G which only supports PCI Express 3 and I ran that for years without any issues. But if this GPU is having architecture issues with older CPUs. Just to play it safe, I'd stick with what the GPU was designed for and above. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and giving it a thumbs up. I'll do both only if you would like, all right? And you know, we've got some other videos if you're willing to check those out. Anyways, cheers, keep it safe, keep it tidy, and I'll see you on the next one.